Scotland. The country you love needs you. To get that much needed change of scenery. To follow in the footsteps of our ancestors. And get lost in the stories of our past. To enjoy the welcome we're famous for in ways that make us feel more reassured. To dine in or out. To taste our world famous produce as fresh as it comes. To get swept up and explore. To connect with something other than Wi Fi and reconnect with the people you love. We can't promise you the big shows we're famous for yet, but when we do, there'll be fireworks. All we need you to do is enjoy all that we have to offer. Only in Scotland can travelling so little make such a big difference. Hello and welcome everyone. I hope you have been enjoying day three of Planet IMEX, the October edition. My name is Richard Allchild, the Senior Sales Manager at IMEX, and I will be your moderator for today. And I'm really excited about this session in which we will learn how you can diversify your supply chain and why a diversified chain program has a social and commercial impact. First of all, a very special thanks to our sponsor, Visit Scotland Business Events, for their support of this session. Scotland has been changing the world for centuries. Their ideas, innovations and pioneering spirit have shaped the modern world. Supported by a world-class array of conference centres, stunning hotels and international travel infrastructure, infrastructure, if you haven't been to Scotland, it is a legendary destination for international conferences, meetings, incentives and exhibitions, and it has unrivaled legacy potential. So now just a little bit of housekeeping. Please do use the chat as much as you like, um, but we will have some Q&A at the end of this session. So for any questions, please do use the Slido system. So if you ask your questions in there, and we will have a poll um, as well throughout the session where we'll be asking you to, um, to use Slido, just that little blue bar that you'll see next to the video chat. So we have two amazing speakers uh, for you today. Uh, firstly, I'd like to introduce Gabby Austin Brown, who's the founder of Diverse, Diversity Ally. Until Diversity Ally was formed, there wasn't an organization taking ownership of the events industry approach to tackling its lack of diversity and inclusion. And Gabby is, is an experienced event professional designing and delivering B2C events. So welcome, Gabby. Thank and you. then Thank and you. then Gabby's going to start us off, to, um, off today and then joining Gabby um, a little bit into the session, we have um, a co-founder, Ashanti Benti Ju, the founder and trainer at Diverse, Diversity Ally. Um, as well as being co-founder of Diversity Ally, she's also the co-founder of Global Network Black in Events and spearheaded the only research in the UK exclusively focused on how organisations can invest in black millennials and Generation Z females within the corporate structure. Um, so now I'd like to pass it over to Gabby to start the session. Thanks so much. Thank you so much, Richard. And it's super exciting to be here today. Um, this has been one epic show. It's really exciting. So I'm really pleased to be here and thank you for having me and thank you for joining the session today. So um, today we're going to discuss uh, how and why you should be looking at diversifying your supply chain. Um, as Richard said, my name is Gabby and I'm co-founder of Diversity Ally along with Vishanti. And we help businesses and organisations to create solutions and strategies to support their businesses to become more diverse and inclusive in their people, culture and image and we do this through education and training through consultancy work and also through events so um, as i was saying why does diversifying your supply chain mean more profit for your business so um, we may have previously found ourselves working with larger and more well-known suppliers which of course does have its benefits such as trust that we've built over a number of years ease and obviously more legal advantages for instance, they're less likely to fold. But now in this time of uncertainty and changing world, and particularly even now at this particular time with pandemic and COVID-19, et cetera, this is a really, really good time to start looking at diversifying your suppliers because the current suppliers that we're using may become less dependable. For example, we have more natural disasters such as hurricanes, 
earthquakes, floods due to climate change, and this can disrupt and delay the transportation of products and services. Also, the increasing effect of cyber attacks, political unrest and economic instability. Um, and these hazards can also affect the livelihood and mobility of people, which could increase workforce instability in operations and supply chains. It therefore makes sense to spread and mitigate risk by evaluating your overall sourcing strategy and diversity within your supply chain. But let's leave behind some of that doom and gloom, talking about natural disasters, etc. And let's look at some of the positive advantages to diversifying your supply chain. Namely, these are cost and efficiency, sustainability, and also reputation. So more choice within the supply chain means that you have the opportunity to analyze cost and perhaps find a better range of goods and services. A study by Hackett Group found that those with diverse supply chains had a lower overall operating costs and also spent 20% less on buying. Another obvious advantage is that it can encourage comp um, competition sorry, between suppliers, not only bringing down prices, but also to improve the quality of the service provided or the product offered. The increased return on investment includes improving the services that you offer and making your stakeholders a lot happier. But it's not just about price, is it? The point is we as organizers and purchasers want the best quality for a fair price. But without reviewing what there is out there on offer and expanding our search criteria, we're kind of a bit stuck in a rut. So by diversifying the supply chain, it also makes you look good. So Another positive there for you, because we're contributing to making events more sustainable and demonstrating that we're more ethical. Also, you're helping to build stronger local economies and buying locally increases spend and promotes more employment. Another benefit is it stops you from being left behind by demonstrating your company's commitment to doing business in multicultural markets with rapidly growing consumer groups. So in the previous slide, I mentioned the fact that we need to demonstrate we understand our different consumer groups and can deliver what they expect, essentially. So let's take Generation Z as an example. We can also include millennials in here as well, since they're our rising workforce and also our rising consumers. Um, in addition to that, Gen Z also make up more than a third of the world population. Uh, they're the most ethnically and racially diverse generation in history. So studies have shown that inclusion and diversity are really critical factors for generational Zs and millennials when deciding whether or not to attend an event or spend money on an experience or even do business with or work with a particular organization. Millennials and Gen Zs want to see your sustainability and your d &I credentials. They want to know what social impact you are making. So it's been noted that corporate procurement, sorry, has a diversity problem. Despite business leaders having placed increased emphasis on diversity and inclusion in recent years, between 2018 and 2019, the proportion of diverse suppliers working with four corporations or more fell from 49% to 46%. So in fact, we're taking a step backwards, which obviously in this current climate isn't necessarily too positive. So we need to be ready when the requirement to make details of supplier diversification programmes become um, a, need to become more visible and when this becomes enforced, which in, in the near future, it actually might become that way. So what I'm going to do now is I'm gonna hand you over to Ashanti, who will take you through what and who are considered diverse businesses and how you can start diversifying your supply chains. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Hi, Gabby. It's always lovely to see Hello. you. <laughs> Yeah. I wouldn't think that we work together, would you? But it's always good <laughs> to see yeah. a colleague. Very <laughs> nice. So, welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, so, what we're going to think about now is what the definition of diverse supplier is. Uh, you might be surprised by the answer. Don't worry, I'm not going to keep you in suspense. It's not a mystery. But I would love for you to have a think about right now in this moment what ways you can diversify your supply chain. Gabby really went through the reasons why and why it's really beneficial right now for your business. But can you think of any ways that you can diversify your supply chain? We'll give it a few moments so that you can maybe pop some comments into the chat or have a think about it. 
what types of businesses do you think fall into diverse suppliers? It's a bit of fun, really. Okay, so we'll just give it a couple of more moments. Do pop any comments into the chat. Okay, so what I'm going to do is share some of the, the answers, really. So the classifications, the definitions as to what uh, constitutes or counts um, as, you know, a, a diverse supplier. Here we go. So diverse businesses are those that are managed, owned, or who employ minority groups, okay? So this can be part owned, wholly owned, or employ a good amount, really, even a significant amount of diverse uh, or minority groups. That can include women, mature workers, young workers, um, those who are part of the LGBTQ community, persons with disabilities. So I don't know, were you surprised by that answer? So there's quite a lot you can work with when it comes to identifying diverse businesses and how we can tap into, collaborate with, partner with, and buy in services from these kinds of businesses. And, and do remember, these can also include micro, small, and medium enterprises, social enterprises, and local vendors. One of the things that we do know is that local vendors are slightly easier, usually, to work with, because we might be doing that. We do that really well in the events industry for the most part. And certainly during a time like this, during COVID, using local vendors might well be very convenient and come in handy. For example, we all know if we've been at home and we've been uh, socially distancing, maybe even self-isolating, we may well have used more local services than usual for things that we may have actually gone to a shop near our office for, right? So generally speaking, local vendors, we understand. But what about social enterprises? Have we thought about working with them for our catering, for example? There are some brilliant social enterprise catering businesses out there. So if we are buying in food for an event, for a client, is that a way we can consider diversifying the supply chain and contributing to the local economy, for example? Lots of social enterprises um, give to charity, okay, and they're there, for example, maybe they employ persons with disabilities, young people, individuals that may have been recently incarcerated. That is a great way through diversifying the supply chain to contribute to a global and local community. So what did you think of that classification for diverse suppliers? It wasn't really a mystery. It's not a, <laughs> a secret thing, okay? It's actually quite simple once we know what constitutes a diverse business and how we as a business can consider partnering and buying in and ensuring that they are a part of or a good proportion of our preferred supplier lists. Okay, so ways that we can diversify the supply chain. So now you know some of the answers. Can you think of any local vendors or social enterprises that you may have worked with recently? Because that can be encouraging. It means that you've probably started doing this already or who you could work with in the future. OK, so we don't endorse any particular company. But for example, in the events industry, you have social enterprises like Eventwell. OK, event world is there to support the mental health and well-being of event professionals. Is there a way you could partner with a company like event well if you're buying in well-being activities anyway for an event, either for your company or a client? Is there a way you could work with event well as a social enterprise that would help you to diversify your supply chain and ensure, of course, you get the service that you're looking for and your client is looking for. So pop any comments you've got down in the chat if you're willing to share. Um, have you recently worked with what would constitute a diverse supplier, local vendor, or maybe an organization that is wholly, partly owned or employs significantly one of those minority groups that we, we discussed? I'll just give you a few moments. So 
Procurement plays an essential role in supply diversification. And I'll tell you why, because often this is the team that might get the final say. I know that being an event supplier myself. Often we will tender for a service or we'll go through the business development process. And then what happens is inevitably I will meet a procurement member of staff, uh, head of decision maker at some point in that business development conversation and interaction with a client. And it's really, really important to remember that you have a sphere of influence if you are in the procurement team to contribute to that economic, okay, and moral value for not only your company, but your local area and society in general. You are in many ways the gatekeepers, okay? And so actually you have an opportunity to contribute, to promote and support the diversity and inclusion aims and objectives that your wider company or business may well have. So if you're sitting there thinking, oh, how could I actually support the diversity and inclusion aims that we have as an organization? Well, often it is about considering how you can include more diverse suppliers in your supply chain. And so when the next time you get that opportunity to review the list or maybe you're presented with a new supplier, that is a great opportunity to think about how you can use it to diversify the supply chain. So here's a little poll for you. OK, we do like a little poll every now and then. When was the last time you reviewed your supplier list? Hi, Ashanti. We're just waiting for that poll to, to take place. We've got some results uh, coming through um, through now. It just takes a, a little time for sure. the attendees to ca catch up with us. Um, <laughs> so far, the, the, the favourite is the, la the last six months. We're currently with two thirds um in the last six months so it's That's um, really encouraging to hear and I'm, it's not really surprising considering what's been happening this year with covid i mean realistically most businesses even mine we've had to reconsider who it is that we are working with some people have remained on the list some people haven't but it's been a great opportunity to actually really look at who it is that we're working with and I guess, like you said, being more more local with with, with that, just because of transport and, and 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 connecting with people. But yeah, no, still firm yeah. favourite is actually up to seventy percent with the last six months. Yeah. Um, closely followed by um over twelve months with fifteen percent. Um, Brilliant. So yeah. Brilliant. So some of those decisions would probably have been driven by budget and unexpected changes that have happened in the industry and in the world this year. Um, but aside from that, this would be a great chance to think about how you um, reviewed that list and when you can actually uh, go back and look a bit deeper about how you can diversify the supply chain. Okay, well, thank you for sharing that, everyone. Thank you. So the question then, therefore, is how you promote an inclusive approach to procurement. Well, one of the things you can do uh, is, um, before we get into those three things, to be honest with you, you watching this stream alone is a great way for you to begin this process, okay, to understand what diversifying the supply chain really even means. And you can take this back now to your colleagues. You can take this back to your manager, to your boss, the CEO, and say, hey, I learned that, you know, diverse suppliers, you know, means X, Y, Z. And, you know, actually, we're doing pretty well, okay? We actually have some suppliers on that list, or it could be that some improvements could be made. So even just locking into this type of content about diversifying the supply chain is a good way to change our mindset and approach when it comes to this particular uh, task. But practically speaking, in terms of the tangible things that you can do, one of them is set goals. And what kind of goals might we be talking about? So one of those goals could be every six months we review the list and every six months we take an honest appraisal as a team as to who our suppliers are and not just review them with regards to how much they charge us, but also um, with regards to, you know, who are they? How do they contribute to their local economy? Do they have a diversity and inclusion policy or objective? And if so, how do they share those? How do they demonstrate that they're living those? So you can set very simple goals such as to review regularly and also to review um, who it is that you are working with. 
The next thing is to address bias in the decision making process. Now, what do I mean by that? So when we talk about addressing bias, quite often we might have ideas or beliefs or attitudes that might not be correct. They might be habitual. They might be a tradition now within our business. Often what we see is, 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 is companies say, well, we don't want to reduce the quality of suppliers that we work with. We don't want to work with poor quality suppliers. And for some reason, that seems to be synonymous with diversifying the supply chain. Now, that isn't exactly fair or accurate. Just because you're diversifying your supply chain, thinking about how you can use local vendors, social enterprise partners, you know, companies that have strong uh, demonstrable diversity and inclusion policies, for example, that doesn't mean automatically the quality of supplier is going to reduce. So sometimes we just have to be honest about where we're at as an individual and as a team. And in terms of the culture within our business, is there bias that we may not have detected? Is there bias that we haven't addressed that is actually interfering maybe or with the decisions that we make when it comes to who we work with and who we choose as suppliers. That takes some honest appraisal. So that's the second thing that you can do. And the third thing is to involve and train all relevant stakeholders. So sometimes as a procurement team or as a um, buying team, OK, we need to make sure everyone's on the same page as to what diversifying the supply chain means, what it involves and what the benefits are. You know, realistically, you might have to get the buy in from your CEO or a manager or even a peer or colleague of yours. You might have to share some useful resources such as these so that they can understand what it really means and why it's important and beneficial to the business, to your clients and the communities that you serve. So it may be that some training is needed, some education is needed, and you may have to act as a bit of a DNI or a diversity and inclusion champion. And in order to do that, of course, you need to know, OK, what is going to actually influence your colleagues or influence your CEO to see the benefits and the potential and the value in really looking at diversifying the supply chain. So I hope those are some three very quick tips I can appreciate. If you do have questions, please let us know. But these are the things that I would say are the places to start. OK, set some realistic, tangible and practical goals to address bias that might exist. Are there ideas and beliefs about supplying the diversity or diversifying the supply chain, even if it is just maybe a bit of laziness? OK, because sometimes we're in a groove. We've done something traditionally for a very long time in a specific way. Can we address that bias and that reality? And then we need to involve and train, if necessary, all relevant stakeholders. That could be your team, your manager or a peer, a colleague of yours who may not know or understand why it's important and how it can be done. I hope those tips were helpful there. So very quickly, I just want to share um, some key indicators, right? I talked about what could influence, what could be helpful to understand. And there's an example here for PG and E who really diversified. They focused on diversifying the supply chain. Okay. And they did that with minority owned businesses. Okay. And also with women owned businesses, for example. Now, what they do is they audit their list. Okay. And they integrate diversity into their overall business strategy. And so this is where we're, we're talking about, does your business have a diversity and inclusion objective, a policy? And not just one that lives on the internet, not just one that lives on the website somewhere. Does everyone know what it is, where it is? Does everyone know how to access it? But that can form the basis. If you have a good, solid diversity and inclusion policy, that can really form the basis for being able to integrate diversifying the supply chain into the way you do things, into your systems and your processes. PG&E, they were eventually able to really show some strong metrics in this regard, not only to assess supplier diversity, but also to assess 
the value and benefit to their business. Okay, so, you know, it can be done. This is just one example. This is just one example. And, and you'll see that PG&E, what they did is they linked diversifying their supply chain to the overall compensation, management compensation. So it was linked to performance, okay? It's a value. And as a company, if you have values, okay, such as respect, such as integrity, lots of companies have different values, right? If you have some of those, the chances are you can link diversity and inclusion in terms of diversifying the supply chain to the living and the demonstrating of those values for those in the team or in the business who hold power or decision-making power with regards to suppliers. So that's just a quick example that you may be able to take some gems from in terms of the benefits. So if you're looking for more information, because this has been a whistle-stop tour and we only have a few more minutes left, we can help you. So if you go onto the diversityallywebsite.co.uk, um, you'll be able to find some brilliant resources. Currently, we have a brilliant diversity and inclusion guide, which you can literally go onto our website and download for free. And we've got some fabulous tips about how you can diversify the supply chain. So that's diversity ally ally.co.uk and you can now get our brand new diversity and inclusion guide specifically for you if you're in the events industry okay events and hospitality industry this guide is just for you thank you very much it's been lovely to speak with you Perfect. Thanks, Ashanti. And, and thanks, Gabby. Uh, wonderful session. I know a lot of us have, have picked up a lot of tips. I think it's all about, as, as you said, just sort of starting small, set those one or two goals and uh, we can really make, make a difference. We do have time for maybe one or two questions that have come through. Uh, the, most, the most popular question that we that's come through is, is there a specific framework or template to report on supplier diversity? So we've actually alluded to that framework, haven't we, Gabby, in our diversity ally, uh, diversity and inclusion guide. So if you pop onto the website and download the guide, there's a lot of guidance there with regards to diversifying the supply chain. Mm -hmm. And if you get in touch with us directly, we can help you maybe with an organization specific template. Perfect. Amazing. Um, so the next question we have is, do you have any top tips to get the conversation started with, you, with your manager in the C-suite? Is it a case of just finding those, doing the work beforehand and finding those benefits or is there any other tips that you could offer? Yeah, I think um, what would be key is just kind of arming yourself with the facts and what you want to uh, discuss to talk about to bring up so making sure that you feel confident in the way that you're speaking and you understand what you're about to talk about with um with your leaders but yeah it's totally fine to to bring this to your leaders i think it's incredibly important if this is something that is genuinely important to you so i think really arm yourself with the facts just to give yourself the confidence when you go into that room essentially yeah, yeah absolutely. And as Gabby said, I think one of the things is also knowing what's important to that stakeholder. Let's be honest. If it's a manager or a CEO, you have to understand what their agenda is and what they would want to know from you. What are the key facts here and how does it benefit either what they do, what they're responsible for or the service that you are offering to clients and the communities you serve? It's always easier to get buy in when you start <laughs> from yeah. the common ground. This is what this could do for you point of view perfect yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that sounds great and we've I've got time for just one la uh one last question and that is um is there an easy way to find diverse suppliers is it a case of just doing your research looking at people's websites and, and looking at the, the structure or is there an easier way to um to, to find find them yeah, yeah it's kind of a mixture of um, a few things that you said there, Richard. Um, yeah, of course, do your research. So searching online, searching on LinkedIn, searching for websites and different networks and groups and associations out there for sure. Um, and yeah, that's the best way to do it, I would suggest. And also just looking in your local area. We discussed a lot during that presentation, I think, looking at your, your local businesses and the businesses in your area and the entrepreneurs in your area. Um, so using those as sources and also word of mouth, speak to people, ask your connections questions, ask colleagues questions um, and see if they have also any examples or brilliant supplies that they can share with you. Yeah, absolutely. And I think to add to that, um, it's one of the things that we obviously exist 
partly to work on. So come and find Gabby and us and I rather on LinkedIn, you know, pop yeah. onto the website, drop us an email, send us a message because we have access to diverse suppliers and we're thinking of practical ways we can make that public and accessible. But do come and find us on LinkedIn and pop us an email so we can have a chat with you about what it is specifically you're looking for so we can help you out. Perfect. No, thanks so much. We're, we're right on time. So unfortunately, we're going to have to end it there. I know we could have probably spoken for another hour on this topic or if not two. So I'd just like to say thank you, Gabby. Thank you, Ashanti, for, for joining us today. And to everyone in the audience, I hope you continue to enjoy Planet IMEX and the rest of today. And don't forget to join us over the next couple of days. And all of these sessions have been recorded if you'd like to share them uh, with any of your friends or colleagues. But as for now, thank you. And it's goodbye from us. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.